All right, so I'm gonna try and take you through how to build a FIFO. Uh, you might know this as a queue, which is essentially a data structure that allows you to control how it, the data it stores is accessed. So in this situation, uh, a FIFO is a first in, first out. Uh, and, and you know, uh, that means exactly what it sounds like. So the first data in is the first data to come out of it. Uh, this is kind of useful if you're building something that uh, you, you have to sort of buffer it before it can be processed. So maybe you're dealing with a real-time operating system, maybe you're dealing with uh, building some kind of uh, service request uh, for an API, um, uh, but you can't service those all immediately. So you have to put them somewhere and you have to order them in the, or it will structure them in the order that they were received. And so a FIFO is very useful for that. So we're building this in C, uh, and this is done with the C90 standard, uh, hopefully. I think it'll all uh, be compliant with that. So uh, you don't really have to have much features, like we don't even have bulls in this implementation. Uh, we're using ints. All right, so let's have a look at the uh, data structure itself first. So let me just change over to the header file. The header file is here. So uh, we have struct FIFO uh, with uh, four different elements, uh, sorry, four different uh, attributes, I should say. So the first one is put. Put is where you are going to, if you're asked to, you're going to put a most recent piece of data into. Like that's the index in the buffer, right? Grab is where if you're asked to pop an element out of the queue, uh, so essentially take the data at the front of the queue uh, out, you will grab it from there. Uh, the number of elements is essentially how many things are stored in the buffer. And here is the buffer itself. It is a buffer of uint64s. Um, that can change depending on your requirements. You might want to make it a whole data structure. It depends what you're doing. Uh, and then here we have the buffer itself with the FIFO size, which is obviously just declared here. Uh, as I said, this is a C90 standard, so um, false and true are de defined here so that we can actually return false and return true. And here are all the little uh, functions themselves. Only one of them is written um, at, at the start of this video. Uh, the other three I'll implement now. So uh, let's just go through them. Uh, FIFO init is obviously an initialization for the FIFO. It is what will set up all the variables. FIFO pop means to actually pop something out um, out of the front of the queue. So essentially call the, the most recent customer from the front of the queue up to the counter. That's the way, probably a way you can think about it. Um, and obviously adjust the variables as required. Uh, and then FIFO push is to, you know, essentially add someone to the end of the queue or add data to the end of the buffer. And FIFO print is just a debug function that will allow us to see what the status of all the different attributes of a FIFO are at any time. So let's switch back over to the FIFO.c and I'll just show you the debug function. So here it is. It's just essentially print out FIFO put, FIFO grab and the number of elements. Pretty standard stuff. And obviously it's... Um, uh, What's the word? Surrounded by hashtag if defined debug. So that's only going to print if we define debug, which as we have here on line 11. All right, so in the main, I've actually set up a test case and you might want to do this if you're trying to build this yourself um, and maybe even use the template. Uh, you can uh, see that I'm initializing the FIFO and then I'm trying to push to the FIFO until it returns false to me. Like it's saying to me, I, it cannot take any more. And what I'm doing is each time I'm giving it X and I'm incrementing X every time. So it starts off at zero here on line 17. And then on line 22, I'm incrementing it every every increment, uh, sorry, every run of FIFO push, I will increment X and try to push it into the FIFO. It'll eventually return false, which means that the FIFO is full and can no longer take any more data. Uh, and then here, I'll just print out the status of the uh, variables inside of the structure. And then after that, we're gonna pop out all of the values until there's nothing left. And then we'll print out the FIFO again. So that's essentially the test case that we want to pass. Uh, so let's implement it. Uh, FIFO init. So when we initialize, we are starting at zero and zero and zero. So that basically means that the F of the FIFO that we're passing in put will be equal to zero. So we'll uh, grab, there's nothing to grab. Uh, it's well, sitting at the zero. I think they're both in the indices, right? The, the indexes of where to put and where to grab from. Um, so put a zero and so is grab. And then here we'll say the number of elements is also equal is also equal to zero. Oh, zero. Um, and that's it. That's all you have to do to initialize it. Um, the, you'll see that the number of elements value makes things a lot easier. So here uh, inside of FIFO pop, um, we're subtracting data. We're essentially taking data out. 
right? So if there is no data, we can't do that. So we might want to say if uh, inside of f uh, the number of elements is equal to zero, then what you want to do is you want to um, return false. You want to say there's no data um, to pop out, right? Uh, and then so we'll just uh, add a comment here. So no data to um, pop out, right? So there we have it. Um, and then in here, uh, below that, if, if that's not true, then obviously we can pop out data. So let's do that. So we want to um, see that in the arguments here, I've used a pointer to a 64-bit int. And that's where the, it says storage because that's where we will store the value. So uh, storage, uh, that is uh, going to be, we're going to say storage. Um, please set the value of storage equal to, um, we'll go to the buffer for the FIFO. And then inside of the FIFO, use the index um, grab to grab the piece of data that is uh, at the front of the queue. Then obviously we want to do two things. We want to, one, uh, we want to increment grab to move um, for, through the queue. And we also want to uh, take the number of elements and subtract that down, right? Because that will be how we uh, indicate that there are uh, less elements because um, we've just popped one out. So there will be one less one. Okay, and the last function is FIFO push, right? So if um, the FIFO is full, so the number of elements, F, the number of elements, is equal to the FIFO size, aka the size of the buffer that we set in the header file, um, then we want to return false, right? We can't add any more data if it's full. So we'll say um, uh, FIFO slash Q is full. And we'll just make that a comment. All right. Uh, and then below that, we want to just um, put the val, like, so if that wasn't true, obviously we want to store that value. Uh, and then we, the way we do that is we just take the buffer. Um, we say, well, you want to use the index put because that's going to say where to put it. And that's going to be equal to the value that you give me. Okay. And then after that, we want to um, move put along. So we want to move put along the um, FIFO itself. Um, uh, and then there we go. Uh, FIFO F put. Um, plus plus. Oh, 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 redid it. That's what's happening. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, uh, put, we're going to increment that across. And then number of elements. Uh, we also want to, well, we've just pushed one in, so plus that up. Okay, fantastic. So that is that. Um, now, there is a, an issue, um, which I've just realized, but, well, not just realized, I've set it up so that you can fix it, but um, the test cases, we'll deal with that first, actually. Um, so here, test cases. Um, let's see if they work. I have a little script that will run it. Um, we've got uh, on line 68, line 54, we've got um, reaches the end of a non-void function. Um, you want to say, yeah, return true. Sorry, should have done that. Uh, and then we'll say return, return true. Fantastic. Um, cool. So there we go. Um, now let's run it again. And you can see, okay, so it's gone FIFO put is 10, FIFO grab is zero, number of elements is 10. And then we're incrementing up to like, sorry, that's, where is that happening? That is happening on the FIFO, first FIFO print is happening after we've pushed them all in. So it's obviously moved up to um, index 10 for FIFO, FIFO put, it's up to the 10th one. Um, and FIFO grab is zero. Uh, and then the number of elements is 10 uh, after, after all those pushes uh, that we're doing on line, uh, it's line 21, we're pushing all those in. Uh, and then you can see that we then popping them all out just below after that, this is where the first FIFO print occurs here. This is the first FIFO print. Then we're pop pushing them all out. And then after that, um, we just run another fi uh, FIFO print just to see that it's all zero. So there is another aspect of this, right? So what happens now if we try to FIFO push uh, and the index of put is at 10, right? We're actually going to try to access the 11th element after that. And that's not going to be very good. Um, we're ac essentially accessing uh, an, an allocated memory. So you basically have to tie the ends together uh, and make a circular data structure so that it doesn't, uh, it, well, the index doesn't start to 
run around uh, in, in memory it's not allocated to. So uh, I'll leave that for another video to show you how to fix that, but that is an introduction to a partially working FIFO. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, the templates and source code will be available in the uh, video description. I'll put it in a GitHub and you can access it there and maybe have a go at yourself. Um, but other than that, uh, thanks for watching and until next time.